everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays, The Binding of Isaac. Random runs, ho, oh, Judas. I know that uh, we've been playing a lot of Judas runs lately. I'm very happy to be doing so. Judas is always an interesting time. Wouldn't necessarily say a good time, but an interesting time. So normally I, um, I've talked about how I've... Maybe not... Uh, downgraded lard is not the right word, but uh, made it so lard is not an instant pickup item. Sometimes you want to like fight your boss first just to see if the boss is going to chase you down and your speed downgrade is going to be like a huge negative. But in this situation, as Judas, I'm going to break my own rule because Judas starts with such low HP that I would rather not like just die to one bomb if, you know, an unhappy accident like that were to take place. Apart from the speed downgrade, this is like one of the dream items that you could expect for Judas. And also, while we're talking about dreams here, how's that? Five cents on the very first floor gives us a very huge chance to spawn an arcade on the next floor, which would normally be like, eh, as Judas, but is actually sweet as heck for us because we actually have the HP, oh, careful. For now, we have the HP containers necessary to make good use of that. Normally, as Judas, you would not. So this was like the fastest first floor of all time. But it's done, and that's okay. We're hopefully gonna get a key. Obviously, you know, now we're in uh, we're in standard Isaac territory. We've got Isaac starting HP in a cube of meat. It's almost as if we had an Isaac run here, but for some reason we chose to pick up Book of Belial instead of the D6. Bit of a weird play, uncharacteristic for me, but here we are. Blow up, blow up, please blow up. Oh god, blow up. Blow up, oh, there goes our red hearts. So, uh, I would kiss the deal with the devil goodbye on this floor. Not 100%, but, uh, we're getting there. That would have been bad. Seriously, now you blow up just as soon as it walks away? It's okay. Keep your cool. That's one of the things, you know, it's also important here early on. I can't really complain about the last run. I'm coming off of that run on a little bit of a high. Started uh, terribly. I mean, it, it ended up being one of the most powerful runs we've ever had, but we really only got to experience that for like five minutes. Prior to that, we had like... 35 minutes of one of the most difficult runs that I've had recently. It actually looked like that was going to be one of the worst Isaac runs that I had in recent memory. Yeah, you know what? We're going to take it. How can I say no to the Dr. Fetus items? We don't take them very often. I'm going to take them in this situation just because they're fun. And uh, especially when we're slow, Dr. Fetus is not as much of a foregone conclusion as Epic Fetus is. Then that's... Uh, that factors into my decision. I'm going to pick this up right away. I don't trust myself to come back for it. You know, know thyself, right? I know myself well enough to uh, know that I probably won't go back for that. I didn't think that room would be adjacent to the second secret room, but it was. And that is enough money to do some things. We don't have any keys, so we can't access the shop, unfortunately, but that's okay. Seriously. No! Yep, there it goes. Don't die. This is risky, but don't die. So, what do I want to deal with the devil for now? Just the ability to fly, basically. If you could give me the ability to fly, I would be an extremely happy camper. Yep. Yep, I'm, uh, I'm frightened. You got me. I'm a, I'm a little spooked right now. Feeling like this run could go bad. Lee. We're very lucky to have found an arcade. Now, something that scares me... I'm going to take this right away. Really? Something that scares me is these flies. I can't really do anything but use cube of meat to dispose of them. Because if I shoot, I might destroy the slot machine itself. Which might not be the worst thing in the world. It might give me some easy hearts, but I also figured let's, let's try for the gold here. So now that we've got two keys and we've gotten a little HP back, I'm going to blow these up. We got our money back. I'm not going to blow up the blood bank yet because that could be useful, but now we can access our shop and hopefully get something a little bit more useful for us out of it. Tinted rock. That feels good. All right. Spirit heart. Feeling a lot better about our situation now. This is a pretty... Well, I did, we have Curse of the Lost, so I guess that's why it's a pretty huge cellar floor for us. Lucky us. This should be good. All right. Important moments. Our shop contains notched axe. Like I said, important moments. There is still a chance we get a deal with the devil, and I know I like to say, oh, this isn't a one run, this isn't a one run. Right now, it actually isn't. We'll definitely play that demon judgment instead of the blood bank. Um, but it would be at least super close if we could just get the ability to fly via a deal with the devil in all likelihood. Okay. 
Range upgrade, probably meaningless. But... Nine lives, forget me now. No, so I guess that means we're gonna be in deal with the Angel territory. If you're gonna give me a shitty upgrade, at least give me like a speed upgrade. Could actually use that. Oh, you're too good to me, game. You really are. So we're definitely not gonna buy Notch Stacks. We will go to our curse room. Oh, another tears downgrade, sweet. Oh, okay. Well, now I look like an asshole, don't I? Let's open up this bad boy, because we do have extra keys. I actually am going to go with this. I know Book of Belial may synergize with Tammy. Or may synergize with, uh... Fetus items. What the heck am I talking about? But... I'm going to go with Tammy's head to help us kill enemies that get in our space, you know? Now, I'm only going to go down this far. Because I, I worry that we don't have very many Spirit Hearts bagging us up. I would have gone down further if I'd known that we would get another Spirit Heart payout right there. But this is okay. Tammy's head is going to allow us to kill enemies that get close to us. Hopefully. Flies. Stuff like that. Spiders. Enemies that are annoying. Hard to hit. Hard to dodge. Catacombs 1. Uh, you know what? I'm super stoked that there is another Demon Judgment there. I'm super, super stoked that I just completely ruined my chance to get seven cents for free there, but hey, that's why we're hoping for that ability to fly soon. It's gonna have to be on a deal with the angel, I guess. Wow, okay. This is a surprisingly fast turnaround to fight the boss. Let's see if we do get our deal with the angel prophecy to come true. And this is like the easiest boss we could ever hope to fight right now. Starting to feel pretty silly about my Tammy's head choice. Wow, a shot speed upgrade. Sometimes, game, I wanna love you. And I do, I do love you, but how could you do this to me? So lesson learned, use bombs, like put down bombs for things that you're worried about, you know, messing up one use only bridges for. That's all right, we got spirit arts to back us up. Do we know what this pill does? Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. Let's begin the cycle anew. Knowing that there's a full health pill in our rotation gives me some peace of mind as well, because really, I mean, that's what it's bothering me on this run in general is that it's a pretty easy uh, way for me to get myself killed. Like having a uh, epic fetus or sorry, doctor fetus is a pretty easy uh, recipe for self harm here. Map is great. Steam sale, well, not steam sale, but a, a half price uh, spirit heart helps me out a lot. I know we didn't get that, but that's okay. Uh, let's just put a bomb down there. Oh, this is perfect. I actually hit an enemy with Tammy's head too. Feels good. I'm hoping that we get enough money to actually allow us to get uh, to five cents as well, because I really want the blood bank on the next floor. But we've been really good about finding ways to get rid of our red hearts for productive purposes here. Demon Judgment has taken like 15 off me already this game, if you count the one on the last floor. Oh, okay. My moon, my man. We'll probably hold off on that right now, because we could use that to snag a special deal. That felt pretty sweet. Uh, we can use that to snag a special deal after the uh, mom fight. Get me out of here. Yeah, I uh, realize I won't be able to use that on the next room, but I think that's kind of exactly okay. I'm trying to be kind of vigilant about checking for the secret rooms. Oh, that was terrible. About checking for secret rooms whenever I'm in a room because, you know, it saves me the backtrack. I can't believe that this unit is not dead. There we go. Okay, item room, we do have a key for it. Wow, okay, Tammy's head not quite getting that damage buff that maybe I expected. Item room contains homing bombs. That seems like a no-brainer good pickup for us. Really? That only took about 100 years. Oh, I know exactly where our secret room is going to be then. Well, I should have... Yeah. Be careful here. This will take us to five cents, so let's just use a regular bomb. What's the point? You know, regular bombs are not a valued commodity for us at this point because we're never going to run out of them. Theoretically, we could, but then we would just resort to using our other bombs, which we have an unlimited supply of. It's not like if we pick up Mom's Knife, that's going to override a uh, fetus or something, I think. If it does, I would be uh, very surprised. So we're still not out of the danger zone HP-wise, but that's my own fault. I can't pick it up yet. 
not just yet. How is this not our secret room? Like, are you effing me? I guess we can pick it up and then leave. There might not be a secret room on this floor. That happens from time to time. So sorry, Demon Judgment. I appreciate your, your support. There's no point in blowing you up, I think. We'll be headed down to the next floor with a little bit more HP. Feeling pretty good about the way things are going, but still not out of the woods yet. Alright. Now we can actually see our... Oh, that's right, we have the map, so I would totally be able to see where our secret room is if it existed. And we couldn't. That makes a lot more sense. I got it now. I was looking for something that didn't exist, looking for looking for loot in all the wrong places. And I'm uh, just trying to stay vigilant about where like our second secret room could be. Might as well do this, because I think this will save me a key. It could save me a key, at least. That's definitely getting exploded. Alright, and please be an item room or shop. Close enough. Now with catacombs, we haven't really fought any enemies, so I... Kind of, uh, I'm a little wary. Ooh, that's good. I'm a little, uh, wary about going too low on HP. Oh, our poop did not stay as golden poop. That hurts a lot. I was hoping to get some more money there, but, um, yeah, I'm wary about go going too low on HP. We're gonna try to stay high here, but I would love to just get more spirit hearts is the thing. No chain reaction, but that's fine. Maybe even preferable. Let's move along. We still also have not had a speed upgrade. And you know what? I'm really starting to feel vindicated about this Tammy's head pickup. Even though it's not traditionally a very good item. It's working out very nicely for me. Being able to kill those flies without putting myself too much in harm's way is very, very helpful. Now we should uh, be looking for second secret rooms here. But at the same time, I also feel like uh, we don't need to yet. We can always just backtrack. I realize I'm completely contradicting myself, but I'm trying to bum rush this boss room and get that uh, load off my mind. Catacombs 2 boss is going to be famine. Well, we're uh, we're not going to pick up any HP. That's okay. We'll get a second level cube of meat, which is actually really nice in the same vein as Tammy's head. Something that helps us kill enemies that are kind of annoying for us. And the miter. These are big plays. We're starting to get there. We're not quite there yet, but we're starting to get there. Hmm. Actually, we might be there, but it's gonna... Now it's just a matter of time before we get to shine. It's not a question of when or who doesn't try. Every once in a while, you just gotta, you know, sing the Party of Five theme song in your head. We're gonna keep doing this just because there's like five very conveniently located potential second secret room locations down here. Why does that sound like a Savage Garden lyric? Five potentially super secret hidden rooms, yeah. Isn't that the one where like... Ooh, I want you, but I don't know if I need you. It's like the song of this holiday season for video games. Ooh, I want you, I don't know if I need you, but alien isolation seems maybe okay. That's, don't take that as an endorsement. I haven't actually played it yet. I was just uh, including it in the purposes uh, for the purposes of comedy there. As always, I encourage you to do your own research. I'm going to buy the Red Heart, because it'll pay for itself on the Blood Bank, at least. The only game that I've been playing lately, apart from everything that I play for the channel, is uh, Shadow of Mordor. I still think they should have called it Shadows of Mordor. I get why it's called Shadow, because you are kind of a shadow. Sort of. That's not a spoiler. Don't bring that spoiler crap up in here. But, uh... I still think it's kind of a silly... Shadows makes more sense to me. Like, I guess there's Shadow of the Colossus, so maybe fuck me. But Anyway, that game I will endorse. I'm not part of any paid WB promotion. You can tell that because I would never get a contract from someone that said, Hey, talk positively about our game in a video for another completely unrelated game. And I know there's been a lot of shenanigans that happened with, uh, with WB's Shadows of Mortar coverage on YouTube. In spite of all of that, that was really bad. In spite of all that, Shadow of Mordor is a dope game, I think. I have been enjoying it a lot, and normally, I don't enjoy open world games. I've gone on record uh, in videos for multiple games saying open world games, not normally my jam. You know, I, I uh, did finish Watch Dogs this year, but like, I, I was probably like in the top like 20% for people who were felt positive about Watch Dogs, and my feelings for it mostly boiled down to, it's alright. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, even though I don't really enjoy open world games for the most part, I much prefer for, on, in general, kind of like scripted linear experiences because I'm a babby or something like that. I don't know what the stereotype for that is anymore. Um, Shadow of Mordor is pretty dope. Feels like Assassin's Creed mixed with the Arkham games, supposedly. With the uh, Nemesis system, that is actually uh, a meaningful change to the, the genre, I think. It makes it, you know, exciting as opposed to just boring to traverse the world. My two cents. There won't be a let's look at. For the various WB-related reasons that have been posited above. In any case, how low do we go here? Uh, that's gonna depend. Do you explode into usefulness? Maybe. We'll see. Uh, not really. Do you explode into usefulness? Not really. We'll play one more. Then explode into usefulness. Hey, okay, that's a good payout. I feel pretty good about this. Despite the fact that this is a, uh, a good run right now, we have, you know, Dr. Fetus. That's pretty much all we need. But then we also have a decent space bar secondary item. Uh, good HP. It's gonna get better. Uh, the Miter, for example. But... We don't feel that comfortable yet, because I think there's been something sucking at our red hearts every single floor thus far. If we get back to full health, then it might be a, a much more acceptable kind of run. I know we could have used a not our own bomb for that, but whatever. Uh, if we, yeah, if we ever get to a position where we can actually keep red hearts, it's going to be a much more comfortable run. But for now, I'm my own worst enemy. Probably being a little bit greedy here. But also, I'm trying to play the Blood Bank, because give me a GD speed upgrade, Napoleon. Come on, now. It's not really working out that fantastically for me thus far, but we are killing most bosses in like two hits, so that feels pretty sweet. Alright, down to the next floor, don't be Necropolis, not until I can fly will I want to take on massive infamy. That's the depths, life's good I'd say, if you hear uh, shouting from the other room don't worry, Kate's just uh, she's playing some video games right now, she's playing Costume Quest, not the second one, just the first one. It's been a long time since I played Costume Quest, man, that was like... That was a let's look at way back in the day when I uh, had just started doing YouTube full time. That brings back memories. From the corners of my mind. I'm not gonna buy anything, even though the red heart's kind of tempting. Anyway, I remember kind of liking it, but also reaching a lot of moments in Costume Quest where I was like, I can't figure out where to go. Do I really want to go to game FAQs to look up? Uh... Oh, speed up, thanks. Uh, do I really want to go to game FAQs to look up where to go from here? And I was like, eh, you could just play this other game that I've been kind of into lately called The Binding of Isaac instead. Right, it's a boss room, we can't bomb our way out. At this point, it would probably be silly for us not to pick up our ladder in the shop, because we have so much money. Are you kidding me with this, uh, with this blood bank horse hockey here? I can't resist, and you know I can't resist. You're enabling me here, game, and I appreciate it. Let's get that blood bag, guys. Now, uh, just wait for this to dissipate. Mm, yeah, I expected uh, that we would find our boss room, and that is indeed how that has worked out for us. Let's go fight the boss, because I would very much love a deal with the angel. Oh, man, okay. So we've really got to worry about knockback here. We've also got to time our shots more appropriately, because this is not going so well. We got hit. Oh, I didn't expect that. Come on. Come on. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. So I think we bait him. And then we shoot a bomb, and then we try to put ourselves in a position where he's, we're baiting him again. It's a very strange way to handle this boss fight, but it got the job done. Okay, pills-wise, there's speed upgrades, which we did. Oh, that's a tears downgrade. I found pills. Wow, well, this is great. Full health, that's really good. And a boo. Bombs are key. Hey, they're much better. So here's what I think. We're going to take the moon card down to the next floor with us. But we'll take full health for now because uh, we can use this to great effect on our blood bank, presumably. I don't trust those bombs. There we go. I trust that one. And, oh, the, one of those just spontaneously combusted. Two of diamonds? I shouldn't use it yet. But I will use it pretty quickly once we get up to like 45 cents. Come on, work with me here. That, well not 45, sorry, I guess 50 cents. But for now, we'll just keep moving on. I know we can use full health right away, but I kind of feel like there's no point to it. If we don't have to use the full health pill to get the uh, or to get the blood bag, let's not. Although we are, you know, 
going to use the full health pill before we leave this floor. Because the moon card is substantially more valuable to get us that extra deal with the angel room. Which I think it, it honestly would give us a, almost a 100% chance of doing, considering we didn't get a, uh, a special room on this floor. I'm actually getting to the point where I can sort of aim Tammy's head. I know that maybe makes me sound delusional. But I mean it. That, as you can see, you know, flawless victory with the aiming there. Oop, that was kind of close. Still trying to find the second secret room. Like, every second secret room for us thus far has been an eternal heart. We've gotten extremely lucky with it. wonder if we can just hit him. Oh, almost. That's okay. We'll get that bomb even though it's incredibly unlikely to provide us with any value whatsoever. Just place one there. We would have found the secret room on that one, for sure. Alright, the miter is really helping us out here. This is probably, I'll say it, it's probably a one run. The miter is strong enough to do it by itself, I think. Curse room contains... Uh, one of those is a tears downgrade. A speed upgrade, well worth the spirit heart that I'm gonna spend coming in, as far as I'm concerned. We are very slow. This will also make me more likely to backtrack, which makes it more likely for me to get good stuff in the future. Um, I'm trying to figure out where, like, a second secret room might be. I think it would be here. Come on. Come on, stop shooting my bombs, y'all. I can't, I'm in denial that that's not there. Uh, yeah, we'll buy the ladder, even though it's not going to provide us with any value whatsoever. I bought the red heart, too. Again, getting to 99 cents is extremely unlikely to matter. We're going to be at, like, 80 regardless, so who cares? The only thing that matters to me is that we get the uh, blood bag payout here. Should be extremely likely. So we'll go pick up our full health pill, take it, come on back now. We're not going to take Bum Friend because it knocks bombs around. That's one of the few items that, that at this point is probably like basically suicidal for us. Seriously. If you don't pay out with at least the IV bag, I'm going to be very surprised. A little perturbed, perhaps even mildly ornery. Well, well, here we are. All right. Sweet. We got the 99 cents. I don't know why I picked that up. But we go down to yet another floor with very few red hearts. I've done it to myself. What can I say? The moon card is extremely important. Curse of the Lost. I'm going to come over this direction first. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bad play on my part. Let's try not to replicate it here. That's better. So I'm hoping to fight the boss as soon as possible, and then, you know, go back into the boss room. Oh, did you see that dodge? That was, that was pretty good as far as my standards go. See if maybe there is a, uh, wow. You know what? No. We're putting down regular bombs. Don't allow yourself to throw on this run. That'll be the worst. Let's go to our curse room, even though our spirit hearts are kind of low-ish. Sure. In the meantime, we will, uh... I wish I didn't take any familiars, honestly. I like, uh, I like Meat Boy, but at the same time, he's causing us some issues here that could lead to tissues sooner rather than later. I guess we should use Tammy's head at the end of the room if we can, because with Samson's Lock, we get the rage value out of it. Rage value, also, they won Battle of the Bands at uh, Townsend High last week. Yeah, they're pretty good. Okay, that totally worked. Spider butt. Spider butt. Spider butt. Is it good? Yes, n but not for us. We've got an item that is sort of fun. Look out. I don't want spider butt. That could have been worse, you gotta admit. Could it have been better? If somebody else had been in charge of it, yes. Gotta play it cool here. As you can see, my version of playing it cool is losing all of my spirit hearts on one floor just before fighting the boss. Oh, okay, that was bad. Considering this is the depths, I'm not very proud of myself. Don't, uh, 
Don't take my joking attitude for tacit approval of my own ineptitude. I am disappointed with my performance, just hoping to grow uh, from it in the future. So, yes, Book of Revelations. I'm not going to take it with me, but I am happy to purchase it for legal tender. Why don't I want to, like, keep it with me? I actually think Tammy's head is going to save us more HP than uh, Book of Revelations would grant us. That might be a very foolish position to take. But I'm committed to it. Plus, if I can't experiment when I have one of the most powerful items in the game, when can I experiment? Answer never. So I'm, you know, F you, hypothetical straw man I just made up in my head. I'm taking Tammy's head and I'm gonna freaking like it. And you can't stop me, mom. I was trying to think of like a country song that, you know, really fits that like fuck you mom mentality. The only ones I can think of are like 30 years old almost. Is that one that's like, she's in love with a boy, and even if she has to run away, she's gonna marry that boy someday. And it's like, yeah, but, like, I mean, yeah, love's good. Don't get me wrong, I'm a happily married man. But at the same time, when I was 16, my dream was to be like a freaking, I don't know, like the basis for Wolf Parade or something like that. I can't even play bass. I did. Basically, I'm getting, I didn't have any dream. If you could give me a dream, I would I would follow you to the end of the earth, which is, you know, it's impressionable. Maybe instead of running away and possibly estranging your relationship with your, your parents over a, um, over a relationship, you should, uh... I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, I'm trying to strike a, a balance here, but in all these movies, it's always like, I don't care, Mom, I'm in love with him, and then the parents are painted as, like, this, you know, villainous group of people. I'm not saying parents should have control over who their kids date, by the way. But, what I am saying is that in the films and, you know, other media properties like this, it's always like, oh, my parents are overprotective. They don't want me to date, you know, Jordan. And then they pan over to Jordan, and he's like a 17-year-old kid with a full mustache, like, riding a motorcycle with no helmet. And I'm like, shit, dude, this movie should be a little bit more sympathetic to the parents. It should be like, well, honey, you know, we're like three times as old as you are, you know, we all had multiple relationships before we got married, and you know, you're not, you're probably not gonna love this guy once you go to college, you know, you're just going through a phase, oh, fuck you mom, you don't know anything about me! In the movies, it's always like, the, the parents are being an asshole somehow, I don't know. Maybe I just have a different experience than everybody else, I think it's, it's on record, I'd say, by this point in the in my YouTube quote-unquote career, whatever it is that I do. I'm not gonna look for a second secret room, let's just get a move on here. Um, that I am Mr. Boring. And, uh, I think that my recent comments there kind of fit the bill, don't they? You know, I'm, I'm, if, if I, if there was a movie about a, a daughter who was, like, dating some bad boy and they had to run away together, I would play the part of Concerned Father. No question about it. I wouldn't even be mad about it. I'd be like, that's a role that fits me pretty well. Despite being a still relatively young man myself. Sure, let's give it a try. They, it can't always not pay out, right? I know we have permanent Polaroid invincibility, but it still costs me spirit hearts, because fuck everything. Um, I think I think parents get a bad rap no matter what. In the... Well, no deal with the devil. In, like, media. They're always, like, they're trying to be the buzzkills for their, their kids. Most parents don't give a shit if their kid, like has fun. They're not like, I don't want you to have fun. It's more like, hey, you know, why don't you have fun? We could just play, like, Monopoly together. Sure, maybe Monopoly is not the most fun thing in the world, but it's a good intersection between fun and not getting your head caved in. Right? Yo, let's go jump off the bridge. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, my mom won't let me. She's such a bitch. She says instead we should spend quality time together talking about our feelings and stuff like that. Learning to grow together as people since we're gonna spend the rest of each of our lives together or some dumb shit like that. Thanks a lot, mom. I, I really can't justify nine lives, unfortunately. Um, that's two full health pills, though, which is pretty sweet. No, it's not. It's one full health pill and a speed upgrade. I would not have taken that full health pill if I had known that. Anyway, long story short, you know, movie parents are a very under or misrepresented genre, I think. You know, I'm getting to the age where I don't I don't should preface this by saying I have no 
interest in having children, but I'm getting to the age where people around me are having children on purpose. Still a little bit on the early side, people are like, whoa, you've chosen to have a baby this young? But it's not like there's an accident always, it's kind of like, yeah, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we were still young when our kids were, you know, young, so we could be active with them. Cool decision, if you're uh, mature enough to make that decision, that's cool. Uh, that's a full health pill, so we're definitely going to want to pick that up. Uh, but I'm getting to that age where I can see myself being that concerned parent, and, you know, my kid wouldn't even be doing dumb shit until they were, like, at least in their early teens, right? And again, if you're an early teenager watching this, no, uh, not all people are equal here, you know? I didn't do that much dumb shit as a kid. I did shit that was dumber than I do now, for the most part, although there was a phase in my life where I did stuff that was dumber than I did when I was 15. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is just that, uh, I, I can understand the role of concerned parents. I don't even know where this tangent is going at this point. This is just Isaac in a, in a nutshell. No, this is Isaac in a nutshell. Oh, I, you know the idea. Stars. Not good enough, unfortunately. This would be a sweet deal with the angel if we could get, like, Holy Grail. And, you know, even my parents, they're, they're still concerned about me, despite the fact that I'm 25 and have a unconventional but steady job. You know, they're... They're still, they, they ask me all the time, like, how I'm doing and making sure that I'm okay. You know, you go into the doctor and stuff like that. It's no more like, you know, hey, don't go out and underage drink. It's more like make sure you get your prostate checked on the regular because it's a silent killer, man. I don't think that ever goes away. And as, as someone who is now a cat owner, I find myself going through that all the time. Before I go to bed, you know, I, when I was a kid, I used to be like, Dad, you don't need to check and make sure all the doors are locked before you go to bed. And you're like, yeah, fuck yeah. Evolution says I do, Sonny Jim. Um... So I find myself like making sure all the windows are closed and stuff like that. You know, don't want my my babies to get outside. They can't fend for themselves. They they don't realize they need a big strong, you know, human male to tackle that well, human companion. Anyway. Doesn't really matter for a cat, you know, relatively low sense of danger either way, I'd say. So, I actually don't know if it's even worth taking these, but I think they do like the bombs do scale with uh with damage. Tears We'd fire more, but I'd rather just get bombs that do more damage, so I'm gonna take that one. The mark. And we'll head down to the next floor. And again, I can't stress enough that if you are, if you're a teenager and you're listening to my comments and you're saying, either I'm not like that, sure, that's fair. I don't know who you are, I'm just making a, a generalization. If I remember one thing about being a teenager, it's hating the idea that all teenagers are the same. Of course, you know, you're not the enemy by any stretch of the imagination. I'm still cool, guys! I can still remember what high school is like, but what I am saying is just, you know, not always do your parents know best. You know, God knows there's stories out there about, uh, you know, objectively bad parents who have done not a good job, okay? Those stories do exist. But at the same time, you know, I, I wish I listened to my parents a little bit more when I was a kid. You, gotta, you all gotta find your own way, but it was that Mark Twain quote, right? It's like when I was you know, 20, I was astonished at how little my old man had learned during his life, and then when I turned 30, I was amazed how much the man had learned in just 10 years or something like that, which is basically, I've butchered the quote, but it's basically a way of saying, you know, when you're 20, you think you're, or, you know, insert age here, you think your parents are kind of stupid and you think you know everything about the world, and then, you know, you age a few years and it seems like they've gotten much wiser, but really, they're just a little bit wiser, you're just actually wise enough to listen to them. It's like, you know, the other thing is, you know, a good analogy for that would be brunch. When I was 16, didn't give a shit about brunch, but then when I turned like 25, I was amazed how much the brunch game had changed in nine years. The brunch game didn't, didn't change that much, my friend, although Eggs Benedict are now everywhere. I changed. I changed to be able to appreciate the brunch game. Oh, I thought that I had killed that room. I'm kind of amazed that this run is taking as long as it is to be honest with you. And it's not me saying that it's a bad run. We are actually finally in a position that I would consider... Uh, how did you not explode there, by the way? We're in a position that I would consider, like, comfortable. There we go. I just had to get him off the back wall, I think. Um, but I am amazed that it's taken as long as it is. I guess the other thing is that picking up the, the mark actually made Tammy's head a little stronger, which is unlikely to be that meaningful, but it's a nice uh, extra benefit, I suppose we can actually manage to use it properly. I'm just gonna just come out flat and tell you that I think at this point in my life, I would actually be a bad parent. I, I see it in myself, you know? 
That's, uh, even just having cats, and this is half joking, but there's a nugget of truth in here, like everything I say. Uh, well, most of the things that I say, at least. We're gonna stick with full health, obviously. I, I'm too worried about my cats. Kate's always like, you gotta stop worrying about it. You gotta let them make mistakes. And I'm like, no, if, if we leave a coin on the floor, they'll eat it and die. And I don't want to bring a child into this world just to give it an anxiety disorder, right? For myself, occasionally I have some anxiety, but it's, it's manageable. You know, I've never been diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Sometimes I get, well, used to before I flew a lot. But I used to get nervous before I'd fly, right? So, never had an anxiety attack or a panic attack or something like that. But I think you could describe me as a worrier. And I don't want to pass that on to a kid, I want to get over my worries first, so that I can raise a kid that isn't, you know, living inside of a plastic bubble, isn't afraid of the, the world around them at all times. And I don't think I'm ready for that yet, I think I've got a little bit more growing up to do before, uh, I even consider becoming a parent. Plus, again, being 25 and not having a kid is also kind of sweet. I'm not trying to make you feel bad if you're a young parent, but there is some sweetness there. You know, I barely got past the point now, where I don't have to tell my parents what I'm doing at any given time of the day. I, uh, I can just do whatever, well, not whatever I want, but you know what I mean. Within reason. Um, be, you know, being 25 is uh, a license to do mostly whatever you want, but also, for the most part, hopefully being smart enough to not do anything incredibly dumb. But if you do, hey, you got the right to do it. Ain't nobody gonna stop you. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. That's okay, because we're gonna be fighting Isaac soon. We'll be moving on. I can eat some lunch. I can't help but feel that maybe the mixture of having not eaten today plus having had like three cups of coffee is having some weird like psychotropic offense on my brain effects on my brain. Psychotropic? Psychotropic sounds like a an old like JRPG or something like that. So I'm not confident enough in my chances of victory to not take poison touch. This is a big distinction because on the last run. I had the opportunity to pick up Poison Touch, like, in this exact moment, but was like, I don't need it. This time, I don't think that I need it, but I'm not confident enough saying no to it. So what this means is that every time I get hit, I can at least walk up to Isaac and be like, suck on this shit, mama jama. I was supposed to be mama jamma, but then I went, like, a little too deep on the motherfucker. I don't know. That was weird. Mama jama was not really where I wanted to go with that, though. It sounds like an NPC from the Crash Bandicoot series. Alright, let's keep this up here. I mean, we're pretty, pretty much guaranteed to win. That HP is pretty sweet. I barely even saw it before I picked it up. I could blow that up, but also I could just not care, and that's pretty much where I'm falling on that right now. Uh, let's, uh, let's uh, move it uh, up and along here. Another thing that we could do is just break open every single one of these doors, which actually is seeming like a pretty sweet option to me. Now that we have to fight Greed, who is, you know, a little tricky to dodge. But we'll be dead now. Tower. That's a terrible card. I want to keep our Spirit Arts. Again, I don't think there's a huge risk of death. But I wouldn't be surprised. So I think anytime I have the opportunity to leave a room early, I'll probably take it. Like this one, for example. Sure, uh, that one probably would have been easy enough to just kill him. We'll see, though. I think we're at the point where, you know, trying to speedrun it isn't going to get us killed and actually could may well be a viable decision. I don't think we can get any use out of Maggie's Faith. Not without Mom's Purse, because we have to keep the Polaroid. I believe. Maybe there's some sneaky stuff we could do. We have to fight through this room, but that's a very quick one, and okay. This is a moment of truth. Might seem like super optimistic, but I think there's a small chance we get out of this without even losing any red hearts. And if we do that, we're in such a good position with our full health pill. And it's looking like that's pretty much exactly how that shit's going down right now. So what I'm gonna do is wait for angel fetuses when the angel fetuses show up. I mean, the bombs are gonna be great crowd control, but we'll also... Oh, uh, there goes our spirit heart. We'll also drop Tammy's head in that situation, which was good crowd control as well, and this is it. No idea where our boss room is on this room. This one's freaking huge. Um, we'll take x-ray goggles. We might as well take Peeper's Eye. Everything else, I'm kind of harboring the small chance that there might be a... You know what? Can we just bomb our way out of here? Uh, I'm harboring hope that there's a small chance that maybe we actually end up... ...being able to get a D6. And I wouldn't mind, you know, it's been nice to have Tammy's head, but I wouldn't mind re-rolling it. 
At this point of the game, it's already, you know, proved its worth. It's been very good for us. Stay there, stay there, thank you, okay. Secret room contains nothing of value. So I'm gonna check down here. And then we're gonna go back through that secret room corridor, because there is a chance. And it's not even a bad chance, there's a reasonable chance that uh, our uh, boss room could be over there. I think it's the lesser like, oh, never mind. All right, well, this is gonna do it then. Shears might seem like a more valuable item for our boss fight, and you might not be wrong, but I gotta give some love to Tammy's faith, or Tammy's head now that we've stuck with it for so long. All right, let's do this. Fun run, easiest run, uh, lots of weird opportunities that didn't necessarily pan out as fantastically as I would have liked, but hey, that's all right. You know, that's, uh, that's life in Isaac. Most important thing, is not doing poison touch damage. It's uh, making sure we pop this full health pill when it's appropriate. And it's starting to get close to appropriate. I don't mind being carried by this because we got carried by our, um, you know, fetus cider to begin with. There we go. No risk, you thought I was gonna blow it there for a second. But here we are going down to the next floor. Thanks for watching. The next floor uh, awaits us tomorrow. I have a feeling it'll be Basement or Cellar Part One, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, Click the like button, it helps a great deal, and of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But again, I'll see you later. Lunchtime!